I got an old Dell Inspiron desktop computer. It's been sitting around for years. I'm going to see what I can do about getting it going and making it useful again. It's quite old, no hard drive, quite dirty and dusty. Let's see what we can do with it. Hey guys, what's up? Dale here. Today I have an old Dell Inspiron desktop computer. It's an Inspiron, Inspiron 620 desktop. It's old. It's about 10, 11 years old. Um, it's your typical Dell Inspiron desktop from that, from that day. It's got an old Core i5, second generation Core i5 processor in it. It originally had Windows 7 on it, of course, when it was new. Um, there's no hard drive. Basically a donor computer. Power's on just fine, but there's nothing to boot from or off of. Um, and it still has the original Windows 7 COA product key on the top right from Dell. So what I'm going to do is show you how to kind of bring it back to life um, and make it a useful computer. The, the um, specs on it are pretty basic. It has 8 gigs of DDR3 1333 dual channel memory in it and optical drive. That's about it. No hard drive. That was taken out a long time ago. So basically I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to blow it out. It's been sitting for a long time. I did test the CMOS battery down inside here. It's right here. And that's actually holding it holding out at about three volts so that's good uh, but I'm gonna blow it out and get all the dust out you can see it's got cobwebs across the fan blades all kinds of cobwebs down in here it's just kind of a mess so before I do anything I'm gonna blow it out and we'll go from there all right guys I got it all blued out let me blow it out blew it out let me mic up here real quick um, yeah so came out pretty clean actually now the thing I'm going to do is revitalize this thing. Um, sorry guys, it's super hot. I was about 95 degrees. Um, <laughs> this is the drive I'm going to put in it. I'm not going to put in an old clunky hard drive. I am going to go with an A-Data SU760 SATA SSD, 256 gigabyte. Get a fresh clean install of Windows 10, 21 H1 edition. I'm um, using my trusty USB flash drive here and <clears throat> I'm gonna then I'm gonna show you how you can activate it using the old Windows 7 product key from Dell this I don't think has ever had Windows 10 on it before it's been sitting for a long time but the COA product key is still intact here so we're gonna punch that in and try to get it activated without having to buy Windows 10 for an old 10 11 year old desktop computer so without further ado I, I'm gonna Right now, I'm just going to loosely connect this SATA SSD here. It's got our power connector, and here's the original SATA cable down here. Um, still connected to the motherboard. Um, I'm going to eventually, if I can get this thing working good, I'm going to probably mount it up here someplace. It's got an extra power connector here, and just leave these kind of the way they are. The uh, mounting rails are gone for the top bay here, but the bottom bay, you can still put a couple of three and a half inch hard drives in there if you wanted to. So like I said, I'm gonna loosely connect this SATA drive. We don't need it anchored down to do what I'm gonna do. So uh, the purpose of the video is really to show you how to take an old, an old computer, laptop or a desktop. I've done a couple of videos in the past where I've taken 12, 13 year old laptops and got them working great activated Windows 10 and away you go so I got that hooked up like I said earlier I checked the CMOS battery it's holding it's holding good so let me hook up my cables here now before I do that let me show you the back here guys here's what we got going on in the IO panel back here we have our standard audio jacks we got a VGA port it does have HDMI which is nice it's got six USB 2.0 ports here it's pre-USB 3.0 and it's got an Ethernet port. There's no Wi-Fi, but that's easy to re remedy. Just get a little USB, a dual, dual band USB Wi-Fi adapter. That'll work good. All right, guys, I'm back. Sorry, interruptions, interruptions. Um, 
So yeah, it's pretty straightforward in the back there. And then in the front here, it's got our standard little I.O. panel up here, an SD card reader, a couple audio jacks, microphone, headphones, two more USB ports, and of course an optical drive stuck back in here. So it's in real, con real good condition. It is old, but like I said, it's been sitting for a long time. So I'm just going to hook up my power cord and my USB to PS2 adapter back here for my keyboard and mouse. I'm not going to connect it to the internet right now. I'm not worried about that. I just want to get Windows on it, hopefully, and <clears throat> worry about activating it once I get Windows installed using that product key up here that I was showing you a minute ago. So I'm going to take my USB Windows 10 installation drive here and stick it, I'm going to stick it in the back here and hopefully boot off of it. I'm going to jump into the BIOS here real quick and show you what's going on in there. Not much. This is all old legacy stuff, so go ahead and power it on. You can see it's super quiet. Alright, nothing to boot from. So, I'm just going to hit F12 on my keyboard a whole bunch of times. All right, so let's go into the setup real quick, guys. Um, date and time look good. You can see it's an Inspiron 620. Here's the build date, late 2011. Here's our Core i5-2320 CPU at 3 gigahertz, 8 gigs of DDR3-1333 and dual channel. There's our A-Data SSD and our optical drive, picking up the SSD just fine. You're going to find in old computers like this, like this one, they're quite basic. All this stuff here is real basic. Um, we want to make sure our USB and LAN controller is enabled, which it is, and onboard reader, card reader, audio, it looks good. Again, with the boot device stuff, it's all legacy. There's no UFI or secure boot, nothing like that to worry about, so it should be pretty straightforward. But I'm just going to exit out of here, put my flash drive in, boot from it, kaboom, and yeah, I'm just going to quit without saving because I didn't change anything. So anyway, see if it'll boot off that flash drive. Actually, I'm going to hit F12, tell it to boot from the flash drive. Surprisingly, these old processors like these second, third generation i5s are quite snappy i3s just trying to get f12 going here all right the first one on the list here is our corsair that's my flash drive so i'm going to boot off of that can't boot up the sata ssd yet there's nothing on it so we'll just hit enter wait for it to boot now on these old legacy biases they got the blinking cursor in the upper left hand corner that's pretty normal to get it going here we just got to wait be patient It does have an old PCI Express slot, probably a Gen 2, most likely. Um, pretty limited in here. A couple more SATA ports over there on the motherboard. So again, if you wanted to throw in a one terabyte mechanical hard drive, you certainly could do that. But I'm just, uh, if everything goes well, I'm going to mount this probably up in here, the SATA drive up here somewhere. Got plenty of cable options and different mounting options. But all right, so here's our Windows 10. That's good. I'm just going to hit next, choose the United States, install now. And again, I'm not connected to the internet. I don't have my Ethernet cable hooked up. There's no Wi-Fi on this. And I'm going to click down here where it says I don't have product key. I do. I have the Windows 7. Could type it in here, but I don't want to be connected to the internet. Otherwise, Microsoft and their infinite wisdom will make me set up a Microsoft account. I don't want to do that right now. So I'm going to choose Windows 10 Home because it was Windows 7 Home. It's on the top. So you have to do that. <clears throat> going to accept the license terms. Hit Next. I'm going to choose the custom, the bottom option here. And there's our SSD. That's cool. We'll hit Next. And that Windows 10 install. Shouldn't take too long being an SSD, even on an old tower like this. It's got a 300 watt power supply in it, the original Dell one. <clears throat> Sorry, I was going to try to get through a whole video without clearing my throat. 
Guess I'll have to try the next one. So you can fast forward through this part if you'd like, guys. But once it's almost in Windows, we'll come back. I'm going to go in. I'm going to punch in that product key and try to activate it and see what happens. And it should activate with the Windows 7 product key. If this, if this machine ever had a Windows 10 install on it, um, even without the hard drive, um, that means it was issued a digital license from Microsoft. By connecting the internet, it would just automatically activate. But I'm pretty sure it hasn't. So we're going to have to use that product key. So we're at 63%. All right, guys, we got through the file copy process. After that first reboot um, with the flash drive, you can just pull it out. You don't need it no more. So I'm going to select the United States for my region. US keyboard layout, skip optional. I fly through this and like I said, I don't have internet, so I'm gonna click over here where it says I don't have internet. Worry about that. I'll do a limited setup. You can change all this stuff later through your settings. Just gonna put in user, no password. Yeah, I'll leave location on, but get rid of all this other stuff. Don't need it, except Just want to get into Windows and you can see the installs working just fine even on an old computer. <clears throat> Part shouldn't take too long. <laughs> Come on, Windows, you can do it. This computer is super quiet. Ugh. Oops, my bad. Come on, get going again. There it goes. Tapped it with my finger. Oops. The heat sinks. Ice cold, basically. It's not working up a sweat at all at this point, which is nice. Yeah, it'd be a good little computer to surf the internet, do some light productivity at home or work, use it down in the basement, out in the garage, wherever you want to use it. All right, so we're in Windows. It's going to start searching for like the displace driver and things like that. I don't care about that right now. So first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to hook up my Ethernet cable to the back, we should have Ethernet drivers installed, which we do. Popped right up down here. See, we have internet. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to right click. I'll just go to settings right here. Get my little pointer out here. We scroll down. You can see here it says Windows isn't activated. Activate Windows now. So let's click on it. Now that we have an internet connection. Um, you can see Windows is not activated. I'm going to hit troubleshoot real quick just to see if it'll activate. It probably won't. No, they want you to go buy a product key. We don't need to do that because we're going to use our Windows 7 product key. All right, guys, the video driver installed while I was trying to do this. So I let that finish. Um, so Windows 10 already took care of that. You can see we're in running in 1080 here. This is 1080 monitor, so everything Probably got a little smaller for you. Let me, uh, let me, uh, ow, <laughs> not used to this mouse on this station. Um, yeah, 1920 by 1080, I'm going to crank her up to a higher scaling here just for sake of, hopefully you can see a little better. Yeah, that's better. So we'll go back to Windows isn't activated. I'm going to, Okay, I'm going to click right down here where it says change product key. 
Okay, we already tried activating and it's not going to activate. Now I'm using the product key up here on the top, right from Dell from 11 years ago. So we're just going to pop that into the, enter a new product key. We have an internet connection. Make sure you're connected when you do this. I'm going to paste it in there. All right, then I'm going to click on next. First thing it's going to do is validate or verify that it's a legitimate product key. Then it will try to activate. So now it's giving us the option because it is a valid key. So we're going to click on activate here. And this part can take some time actually. I've seen this take like two minutes. But up here it still says Windows is not activated. And then once it activates, now don't on an old computer like this, don't bother going to the manufacturer's website. Like Dell, I already actually did. I went over to my other computer there and punched in the service tag number. And there are no drivers for Windows 10 on an old computer like this. They pretty much stopped at Windows 7. So, bingo, we got Windows is now activated. We can close this. Windows is activated with a digital license. That's awesome. So Windows 10, you can see we already got our video driver. Let's check out our device manager real quick here. We've got one little, that's part of the chipset. Um, not going to worry about that. Windows should take care of that. So I'm just going to go back to settings at this point. We'll go to update and security down here. And we'll just tell it to check for updates now that we're activated and we're in Windows. Um, yeah, so that went, that went pretty slick. So I took a really old Dell desktop, Inspiron 620. Going to throw a new ADATA SATA SSD. It can be any brand, Samsung, Crucial, take your pick. Any capacity up to at least a terabyte, 512, 500, 250, whatever. Uh, I'm going to get this mounted up nice in here somewhere. Make it look pretty and yeah, it should be a good little working tower. So that was, uh, I hope that was, <clears throat> excuse me, I hope that was, <clears throat> hope that was helpful to all you guys. Um, check out more of my videos. Give me a like if you liked it. If you loved it, I'll take a sub. That'd be awesome. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.